Hey, y'all, week two of the Killy Tapes. Um, first off, interview with my my good friend, former teammate, Super Bowl champion, Patriots star, Rob Dinkovich. No matter where our convos start, they always go somewhere different. And Rob is a very paranoid person. As soon as we touched down in Tanzania, it was all about the various ways that he could die, whether it was black mambas, altitude sickness, uh, lions, Somehow we got into bears. Um, he's got a strategy for defeating all these these uh, these animal foes, and uh, as you can imagine, he's this interview is, in my opinion, hilarious on his part. So enjoy, check it out. I'm here with Rob Ninkovich at eleven thousand four hundred feet. And we're two dudes on a rock. Mm, Rob. Yeah. How we doing? The rock is a little pointy. It is. Yeah, a little it, bit. It I'm is. okay though. I feel okay. You're I'm good. comfortable. You're I'm good. comfortable, yes. I mean this kind of adds to the whole thing about like, you know, I feel like you are kind of a neurotic paranoid person and you've got a list of ways that you could die on this mountain. Phew. One slip. Yeah. We drop at least eight feet. Yeah, that wouldn't hurt me. We'd be bad. maimed. I'd be okay. It's just yeah. the helicopter we might have an issue landing around here. I'll be fine though. Um, I really feel confident in my ability to, my heart rate was low, so I'm not really nervous about that. Um, and the brain swelling thing, I mean, what are you gonna do about that? We play football for a living. Yeah, I've, I've had plenty of brain swelling <laughs> incidents. You talk about the helicopter, right? I mean, yeah. so the deal is on this mountain, uh, you know, if you hurt yourself, and I've seen it happen, I saw somebody just snap their leg, you call it flamingo. It's flamingo. <laughs> well, that's when your knee goes the wrong way. So, you know how a flamingo walks, their knee goes this way? Like, if you're like a safety or like, you know, you're right. coming downhill, flamingo, that's a terrible thing. You step in a hole and you go flamingo, you're in trouble, you're not getting down. Well, no, so I, I'm here to tell you, you are getting down. I've seen somebody get like gurney down, but the problem is like dudes are carrying you and it's just, they're in a hurry and you yeah. bump, you know, and you, your leg's broken, so. Yeah, it might hurt a little bit. So my thing is like, if you're gonna hurt yourself up here, yeah. go all the way so you can get the chopper, right? Get the chopper. <laughs> get to the chopper. You want to get, get the, the chopper. Ch you want to get the chopper. Yeah. And it's gonna skip the four-hour drive back to the hotel. It'll just take you back to the hotel. Yeah, quick, you know. Some painkillers. You'll be at on safari. You'll be good. Within 12 hours. This is just you know it's a little bit out of my comfort zone I would say, but it's an experience, a life experience I would like to say. So once in a lifetime experience. It's not going to happen often. Probably just once for you, judging by the fact Probably, that... Probably, but you know what? There's th there, This is a little bit nicer than I anticipated right. as far as convenience and, and sleeping arrangements. The A-team, our guide group, group is doing amazing. a tremendous they're job. Amazing. Yeah, so they've and done we're tent mates. We're, we, yeah, in the altitude, I had a little bit of gas, a little flatulence, but I'm okay now. I think I'm... As I'm, long as you don't stand like in the front and you get to the back. <laughs> yeah. But like honestly, I was shocked. Yeah. I was shocked to hear hmm. that somebody with a beard like yours has ever slept outside. Yeah, this beard is more so like it's like a false, like I'm kind of I'm like look tough and rugged and it's like, like might be outdoorsy, yeah. but really um, kind of clean guy. I like to you know wash often. Um, not really outdoorsy. I've never camped. I mean that, that's kind of like something you do at a young age and then it, it progresses into something bigger you know my family they never camped you know i never went right, and right, slept right. outside well, yeah so, um, well i so so it's like uh it's like big tires on a jeep in the city or like a winch that's yeah, your beard yeah similar for show. yeah it's just for show it's like a ford raptor it's like a ford raptor. like most There's people no... never go off road with that but they buy it and it's a baja car but it, it's, it's just... never gonna go off road and it's too wide and it's so wide for you... all the parking yeah spaces. you're not gonna get in your garage with two cars so so how was sleeping outside last night and how was being tent mates and it was what's cool the experience it, like it was so good far? um i have a little like relaxation um you heard it my little relaxation um music that i put on it's it's nice to relax the mind. I thought it was fine. There was a lot of zippers going mm -hmm. the whole night, but it was fine. I slept good. Um, the sleeping bag is warm, so I had to, you know, kind of like Ace Ventura and Pet Detective 2. Cut on these rhinos. And yeah, like, you were in the rhino. I just wanted to take everything <laughs> off because I was sweating. So, but so then at, at the end of the night, it was cold, so I felt great. So you... you um... I run hot. 
you, you do run hot. I You've been hot. sweating a lot this whole trip. Yeah. Uh, I was a, a little bit concerned about you the first day. I didn't feel great the first day. I think it's the jet lag got me a little bit. Sleeping hours are kind of messed up, but felt great today. Got a lot of energy, you know, like that high and low stuff. Okay. So, so you're you doing this a lot mentally and emotionally. That sounds like something you need to be concerned about. But so, and the meditation thing. So yeah. like, I'm trying to sleep last night, and I'm reading a book just to get book. tired. You're doing notes with your pen. Yeah, I'm doing notes with my pen. Like I'm going to retain any of the fucking yeah, information. Okay. Like I'm an intellectual well, guy. You're losing a lot of brain cells at altitude, so you're trying to gain them. I'm by trying reading. to gain them back. Yeah, so I bold. get it. So 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 you turn on this meditation thing, yeah. which to me was anything but relaxing. The guy's really? voice was creepy as hell. It was very soothing. When did you start doing that? And, I mean, I just it, it's a, you know if you went in my phone, it's probably from the first iPhone I ever had. So it was just it's really old. So I just do it every now and then. Nothing yeah. crazy. Yeah. Helps me go to sleep if I don't have a fan. I usually sleep with a fan, like a box fan. Yeah. So like my oscillating my, or box box like. Okay. You know, Walgreens, 20 bucks, box. It is a great tool. Just but for me, it was just really fucking unsettling instead of, like, relaxing. Okay. But anyways. Yeah. Well, you, I mean, you know what else you're kind of weird, too. You got a little oddness to you I'm as quirky, well. yeah. but you're really quirky. I would put you on you a scale of quirky. You would put me quirky. above you in quirkiness? Absolutely. I think anybody in this camp would say you are, like out there in a good way everybody the reviews are great on ninko i would say i'm more funny you are funny quirky yeah. because people enjoy my company so usually quirky people you're like wow that guy's a weirdo don't don't go around him my big question for you is um as paranoid as you are and i know you've thought of it mm. like top five or like top three ways you can die oh. in and around this mountain because i know you've, yeah. you've run through them all well i go back to the day we were on the phone and I committed to this challenge to climb Kilimanjaro yeah. for a great cause. Obviously, water boys, I love them. For the plug. Um, so I thought about altitude sickness, my brain swelling, and not coming down because I'm stuck up here, frozen like an ice cube. Um, <laughs> Where are you gonna get frozen like an ice cube? Because it's cold. There's up fucking there. glaciers on the top. It's you cold. might be able to see one anyway, if it weren't for the clouds. But the, this, there's this, there's glaciers this that is are my melting. my time on three top three deaths. Okay. okay. Um, then I thought about a wild animal. You know, like like buffalo, like a big buffalo. They say buffalo, I say buffalo. Like a big buffalo hiding in the brush and just horning me and just mauling me up, you know? Right in your leg, goring Oh, and just hoofing me, you know? And Slow bleed. Internal bleeding, just something's going on. I just don't feel right. Like, can we get down fast enough? And I can't. I think you would Then number three was snake bites, like black mamba. Snakes on a plane? No, snakes on <laughs> um, uh, anyway, what the heck's the so movie? So snakes are three. Snakes are three because you get hit with a snake. Guess what? They you need frozen. You need frozen anti venom. Right. And you need to be there within 45 minutes. You research this, which is impressive. No, I most just, people don't know. I absorb knowledge, and I was in the car. I was listening to one of the drivers. He said, "45 minutes. You don't get. You don't get anti venom. You did." <laughs> So I was like, okay, great, no anti-venom. We're going to be about six hours from civilization. Um, I would speak highly of you at your funeral. Hey. Well, at least we have some video. They call it a seven-step snake. Okay. Because you have seven steps. And you're gone. But there's no mambas up here. Okay. What so about, they said. On this rock, what if a spider bit my leg? Poison spider. Are there any poisonous spiders up here? Well, I don't know about poisonous spiders, but as short as your shorts are, they probably go in there and get the I think yours are shorter. We sack. can do a measurement. Well, let's not get into that. <laughs> yes. Another thing is, yes. you like your, your first day was funny to me, never having slept outside. This is a, definitely outside the box. Mm. You FaceTimed me from REI seven times with the guy at REI who's like, this fucking guy, oh, Commission okay. City. Oh, that's You showed up. up looking like Safari Dad or REI Mannequin. This is like, REI? Like everybody on the trip was just impressed. Your whole outfit. I mean, day one to day two. I mean, it's I've, been. Yeah, like, what have you three, enjoyed buying? I enjoyed the backpack. It yeah. was a fun experience because they weighted it and they're like, put it on your your love handles and see how it feels. You got love handles? A little bit, you know. Like I look like a, no offense to a plumber, electrician. I kind of look like, you know, Joe the plumber. But it's okay. You know, that's I played a long time in the NFL. It's you were also like, an iron worker. A little bit. Let's. That story has, you know, it's like the, a tail and it just kind of grows. I worked two weeks. Iron working, made a you know good amount of money for college. A lot of money. Yeah, good amount. Yeah. How much an hour? Thirty-two fifty, double time, sixty-four. 
32. Like 6450. That's insane. Like it's good. Iron yeah, workers work hard. Yeah, they do. But, but they it's should double be time, paid. so you go nine at night to nine in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. Was, was that hard or was it, it like was, challenging? It was a little I mean, It wasn't that bad. I mean, it was two weeks. You With your pops? Well, no, my dad wasn't there. It was my cousin. Your cousin? Yeah, a lot of, a lot of my family are iron workers. Good so, Midwestern boy. You know, hard work in uh, Chicagoans. I know who like you Like to are. drink the beer. But I heard the rumor is you're not really from Chicago, you're from the Burbs. I'm from the Burbs, but I was born, like, my family's from Chicago. Then we moved out, you know, for schooling purposes. And, you know, I'm a suburb. So, like, Joliet Jake, Joliet, Illinois, the prison's there. One hat. Black. Does that make it t you tougher? Cause no, 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 I'm not tough. If you like go no, fight, you are tough. I'm tough like in a certain way, but I'm not like fighting. Like if anyone in like, a confrontation, I'm like, all right. Rank the people on this trip in Mortal Kombat from easiest to hardest, it, not including the vets because I'm not. Well, the vets with you can't you can't include those guys because they would, you know, they they got they've, they've they got seen, a trigger on them. Yeah, and they've seen shit. Yeah, that they, like they'll just they'll go on you. So, yeah. you know, I think number one psycho would be yourself as far as Mortal Kombat, because your finishing move, like you'd have the biggest eyes, and you would do something like, your, your eyes would just be like, and you would just like lose it. You, you would not happen. You think I can kick your ass? You, yeah. me? Yeah. It'd be a good one. It'd be a good, It'd be a good one. So but you got really big You hands. really rank me ahead of, yeah. dude, think about who's on the trip. Well, okay. So last, look, the last no, person I'm fighting but is big guys, big guys, they get tired quick. Once you get tired, it's over. Fuck that, you're fighting Haloti, it's. Haloti, I, I wouldn't want to fight Haloti. I wouldn't want to fight him. Not a fight, that's a maul. It's do you think he'd maul you up like that? He would put you in a pine box. <laughs> I mean, I I don't I, when I talk to him and I see his personality, he seems so gentle and so nice. Don't How angry could he really be? Don't How piss, angry could he get? Don't piss the guy and Bo, off. I don't know, Bo, he might get tired. I'm not Kelsey, worried about Bo. Kelsey seems like he'd Bo. be like, "Hey man, why are you doing this? I'm your friend." No, like, Kelsey Kelsey <laughs> Kelsey has a, a switch. He's got a switch too? Oh yeah. We all have a switch. No, but Kelsey's switch. Yeah. I'm gonna put, the easy answer is Cortland. Oh, you think Cortland? I think there's a lot to lose with Cortland because. Because of his size? Well, there's a lot to lose. So my thing is if I'm fighting a little guy, I'm kind of worried about it because if Did I lose, get... it's embarrassing. Yeah. If I fight a big guy, there's no shame in Haloti boxing you up. So yeah. like for me, I'm going to Cortland first. I got some pretty good hands though. I box a, you know, a little bit. So I think I seen you at the gym. The big guys. I seen you I think at the, the big guys. I could get them and move a little bit, get yeah. them more, get them tired, and then they they wear out a little bit. Then you go to work. You know, Cortland, you got to get in first and slam them down and stay on top and kind of hope that he doesn't have superhuman strength, which he looks like he does from the calf veins and all the veins he has. He looks like he might just like Hulk out. He's vascular. He's, oh, he's very vascular. No, I, Low I, body fat on that. Listen, he's one of the toughest guys I've ever played with. Yeah. I mean, and he's just scrappy. He's fun. I like him a lot. But, I mean, uh, you got big dogs and smaller dogs. Yeah. Um, Sometimes the small dogs, Listen, well, they that, bite more than the big dogs. Haloti's a, 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 a wolf. And you think he's a wolf? He's got the bite force. Yeah. Six I mean, times of a... He's got the hyena bite force. Yeah. Which, which, so, so Orca, our, our guide, his yeah. name, Orca. Orca. This is the most badass dude on the mountain. Great he, whales. I was picking his brain last night about what kind of animals we have up here, for yeah. your sake. And, you know, our first camp was called Simba Camp, yeah. which means lion. Yep. Now, they say lions would wander up to 13,000 feet here in the 40s and 50s, but the traffic has run them off. Yeah. But he's seen, I think, leopards up here. Yeah. And he saw um, hyena shit. See, hyenas, you don't mess with a hyena because they... they they said they'll crush, he said they'll crush your skull. Oh, you go right in your tent. Oh yeah. And just yeah, that's it. And you're just like you wake up in the morning looking for me. Dead. Yeah, you're gone. They drug, they drug you about six miles up that way, and they're all just having a feast. They seem like and, the types that would just kill you for fun. Yeah, and but another thing that I learned about a hyena, they will eat that, their prey alive, as opposed to a lion kills their prey first and then devours. Hyenas enjoy as they're alive, so it's almost they're way savage in that aspect, you know. And they're big, dude. Have you ever seen the internet? Like, because I if you have, Google a hyena standalone, I do. I, did I show you the video of the hyena? I was from me to you and a hyena with a small fence. You had a fence. Yeah, a small fence. You had a fence. Yeah, it was a All fence. I'm saying is like, but they're, still they're right big there. dogs. Oh yeah, they're, they're big. not like dogs. So when I think of a dog, like say a dog's gonna attack me, I'm just. 
grabbing that thing up and I'm dropping all my weight on its head and I'm hoping that it like stops dead in its tracks. And you just you just stop that dog. But a hyena, I feel like the the you know you ever see the have you seen what's the movie with Will Smith and they have those dogs and they're like <laughs> why, would they, you, why would you have to kill a dog if it's attacking you I guess. say it's a, a, a wild dog and it's just coming after you like say it's trying to attack your, one of your kids and you're like oh yeah. that's not happening if the dog's attacking and it's coming whale, after you and it's go. you know say it's a you know if I, like a dog that isn't right you know mm -hmm. it's inbred or something's wrong with it mentally and it's coming after you you got to do something like a chupacabra which are like these hairless dogs they're like blood sucking. They suck the blood out of livestock down in like Central America. Um, but they, it came to came to find out it's dogs with mange. Oh, so a dog okay. with mange, yeah. maybe you got to put it out. Okay. You know, but I get that. But I think it's a little harsh to think about choking a dog. Out. Like I am legend. With like Will Smith, I am legend dogs. When the dog comes out and it's and then he's you know like yeah. its face like a dog like that. You couldn't kill that dog. That's like a hyena though, that's what I'm comparing you, it to, yeah, you a hyena. Yeah, you couldn't kill you a couldn't hyena. couldn't do it, no, 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 no. chance. So like, you heard about the mountain lion that the guy yeah, put in the Yeah, I had a lot of questions about that. What, like, do you, what do you want to know? Questioning the size and like, you know, strength, health, you know, like, maybe that lion wasn't in great health. And it was elderly. Have, maybe it didn't have the strength. Maybe R it wasn't elderly. Maybe it was arthritis. young, maybe it was really, really hungry. Very, very, like imagine you didn't eat for about six days, you're on the verge of death and you got in a fight. There's no chance. Yeah, I'm losing. You're going down. But there was another guy a couple years ago in California who felt really bad about killing a mountain lion. He was like a college wrestler. Yeah. And he felt bad, but I'm like, the mountain lion's trying to kill you, bro. Like, I don't know if you've just, had a he cat. He was jogging. If, you've if had a, a hunter gets killed by an animal, that's your fault. Yeah, if you're trying true. to kill an animal, yeah, yeah, you get, you yeah, know, it's you not like it. I, it's not like I want to see anybody die, but it's just like, okay, like it's you like played that game. game. Yeah. You played that and game, and they have usually guns, which is ridiculous. Yes, yeah. like, so so I mean, you know, I I was hearing a story today about a grizzly bear. Have you heard this story? One of the grizzly few bear. guys. Oh. The, one of the last things because I do some backpacking in Montana, yeah. and it's just it's Revenant, scary. That movie, that movie with the Revenant. Revenant. And, oh, yeah, Revenant. I think that might have been unrealistic, but what I heard about was. Revenant, great movie, by the way. Beautiful love it, movie. Love it. Um, ate a candy the first time I went and saw Revenant, mm. and I felt like that first fight scene was just mind blown. Was like three hours long. Oh, like the guy it's was great. riding in on his horse, like slow mo, scalped. And then the scene where he's eating the snow. Yeah. Oh, I yeah, was laughing great. my ass off. So, <laughs> so in addition, uh, this guy killed a grizzly bear. Yeah. He's one of the few people without a weapon to kill a grizzly bear in history. It mauled him in, I think, Wyoming. They have the bear stuffed in a bar. Yeah. The bear had his arm, and he had the wherewithal to stick his hand. Because you remember, his mom told him this. Yes. What a mom told him to stick his hand down the bear's gullet and grab his esophagus. So he let go, and then he get this. This fucking guy bit into the bear's, what is it, carotid artery? Yeah, it's your carotid artery. He, he found it and bit into it. I'm saying, and just, and I'm just saying, bit it I'm, just, here, look, just, look, I'm just gonna tell you this, that's a complete BS, that's BS. What did he do, bro? There's no way, because guess what? I have a 200 pound Mastiff and a bear is a lot bigger and you can't even get to the carotid artery because but it's there's kind, so much it's kind skin. Of like, it's kind of like a video game boss. Video game bosses are this huge. Fur? Hold on, video game bosses are fucking huge, but they always have one weak spot. Your mastiff, you can't fit your hand in its mouth. That bear has the that bear one weak spot. bear down on your arm. It's just breaking your arm instantly. No, not if you grab its esophagus. I don't know. I don't know. Dude, I've studied if, this all day. If I had no chance, and yeah. I knew I had no chance, and the bear's on all fours, I'm just freaking running as fast as I can, and I'm hitting that bear in the chest, and I'm just saying, hey, like maybe he'll respect the fact that I did it to him. <laughs> you think he respect you? Maybe you just hit him as like, like one time in a real quick football story. One time I was trying. They said, don't bull rush incognito. He's too big. I said, you know what? I won't. I won't bull rush him. I swear. But you know what I did? You bull rushed. I tried, and I got thrown out <laughs> of the club. Just... But he respected you. I don't know, but anyway, I mean, he at least he told me he respected you. Yeah, he respected me because I tried, and he scooped me up and yeah. he threw me away, and yeah. I said, "Yeah, I probably shouldn't bull rush anymore." But I tried it. Maybe the Bears watch the Patriots. Because guess what? If you run, that Bears running 35 miles an hour, no. and they're tracking you down with about six inch claws, and they're climbing they on say the back. if it's black, fight back in Appalachia. If you okay. run into a black bear, yeah. uh, if it's brown, lay down. Which you it, roll in a ball. You got to have serious stones to lay down and feel that bear's just breath 
and you're closing your eyes and it's just like... And then like, they do that pounce thing. They give like, you a hickey. <gasps> and the thing that most people don't even talk about is like a bear's claw is probably going to kill you. It's going to oh. put like a three inch No, opening. well that's the thing too. A lion. Think about like you ever have a cat or a kitten run up your leg and you're like, oh, that, that just went right in my skin and it hurts really bad. Think about a lion. Their claws are this big, just as sharp. Yeah. So they hit you like this one time. They're all the way down to your rib cage, and you're just like, oh, oh shit, a lion. No, I'm not. I'm not falling for that. I'm not that. It's not happening. Because guess what? <laughs> if it's coming this way, you're not sitting there. It, uh, calm not, and collecting. I'm not. But all I have to do is outrun you. Rob, thanks for part one. Oh, thanks. We'll catch you at yeah. higher altitudes okay, and tackle some it. harder subjects. Let's do it. I'm excited. It's been fun, dude. Let's go. Thank y'all for watching. Uh, hit the like and subscribe for me one time, please. And we'll have some more of these Killy tapes. We got a lot in the pipe there uh, from last trip up the mountain. Uh, we'll have that next week and keep it going.